Welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel, everyone. So today we're doing this crystal growth. I would like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this video and let's jump right into it. So first you're gonna need some kind of a stone. If you don't have a stone, you can just use a sphere and still follow along. So I'll just use the Chaos Cosmos browser to import maybe this rock. Uh, so right now it's just a proxy. So I wanna say import mesh delete the proxy and we can just scale this rock up a little bit and let's jump into type flow so birth operator and i want to give birth to 250 particles from frame 0 to frame 100 now they need to be on top of the rock so position object pick the rock set this to large dots yellow right so as i go forward these particles are popping up on our rock you can extend your timeline to maybe 200 frames. Now I want them to rise up to get the growth going. So I'll just add a force operator and set the gravity to 0.05. Right, so this will make them go up. But as you can see, they keep accelerating. So we can just add a slow operator and set that to like um, 10%. Right, so now they're just slowly rising up but they're rising up in a straight line. So I'll add another force operator and we can give it a noise strength of maybe just 0.2 centimeters. So now they're like waving around a little bit. So now we of course need to delete them after a certain amount of time. So delete operator and I'll set the timing to particle age. And I wanna delete the particles when they're around 80 frames old with a variation of let's say 20 frames. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, maybe that's still a bit too high. So I'll set this to just 50 with a 10 frame variation. See what that looks like. So let's add a spawn operator, set it to by travel distance. And I wanna move these into a new event. And under inherited properties, I want to inherit 0% of the velocity so that I'm just creating trails like this, right? So this is what you should be getting right now. So in this event too, we can just give them a shape, set it to 3D and chunks round. You can set the display to geometry, right? So now we have these little stones being created as our trails but we want to scale them up over time to make it look like they're growing. So we've done this a bunch of times on this channel. I'll add a scale operator, set it to absolute and set this to zero. And then I'll add another scale operator, set the timing to continuous because they need to grow up over time. Interpolation value to 0.1. And again, the type has to be set to absolute here. So now if you go forward, we have those crystals slowly coming into their full scale. Now, if you want, you can add some variation. So maybe 20% variation and same for the interpolation. So they don't all grow at the exact same speed. So we have something like this, which in itself is pretty interesting. You could turn this into some pretty cool sort of nature abstract, maybe corals or anything like that. Now, I think I want them to stop appearing sooner. So under birth, I'll just set the end to maybe um, frame 50 and the total amount to maybe just 150. Just feel like there's too many of them, right? So we're getting something like this, right? So again, this is not bad, but for our tutorial, I wanna actually set the scale to 200% because I want these crystals to be thicker, which means that I can have less of them in here. So under the spawn, we can set the step size to maybe just two centimeters or 1.5. And maybe let's set the scale to 300% actually. I want these pretty big crystals going on because we're actually gonna give birth to smaller crystals on top of these. So final adjustment, I'll do 350%. You can turn off the display for these yellow dots. So let's add another spawn operator. We can leave it on entry and I want to give birth to maybe 10 offspring. Again, let's send this into a new event. But right now they're being born right on top of each other. So what we need to do is go under position and say parent shape surface, right? So they are being born on the surface of their parent particle, but it happens on that first frame before the crystal grows and we need it to wait a little bit longer. So I'll just go under timing, set this to particle H and set the range to maybe 20. 
right? So what's happening now is this spawn operator waits until the green crystals are at least 20 frames old before it gives birth to offspring on the surface of these green crystals. So you end up with kind of a mess like this, but we're gonna fix it right away just by copying over these scale operators. So just hold shift and move them over here, right? So right now they're scaling up, but they're too big. So I'll just set the scale here to maybe just 50%. And we have some small crystals growing on top of these big crystals. So maybe we can set the particle H here to 30 frames, let them wait even longer and set the scale to 100%. So now we're starting to get some nice detail, right? We have the big crystals show up and then the small crystals start showing up on top of those. Now in the spawn operator, you can give it a variation too, so that they all wait a different amount of time before they start growing on their parent crystal. And just to make this more interesting to look at, we can maybe change this color to like dark blue and we can change this color to maybe purple. So this is nice, but I want to add one more layer of detail to this. So I'll just do this one more time. So you can just hold shift and copy this spawn operator one more time. And then you can copy this event paste, change the color to maybe orange, connect it to the spawn. And let's change this scale to maybe just 50%, but I want more of them. So maybe let's set this to 20 offspring. And under uniqueness, you can just change the seed so they're not born in the exact same place. So now if we go forward, you can see that we're getting the main blue crystals, then the larger pink crystals, and then finally we have some small orange crystals growing on top of those. And when you render it out, you do end up with this nice sort of gradual growth where the big crystals are nicely being covered by the smaller ones. So, you know, you can increase the amount a lot higher, but make sure you save your work because again, spawn can easily crash max. So I will just set the amount of orange particles even higher. So maybe let's do 30 and for the pink ones, I'll do 15. We can increase the scale variation a lot higher. So maybe 50% for these and 50% for these also, right? So here you go. This is the setup. Feel free to play with these settings and make some interesting shapes. And so now we're going to move into the rendering portion and adding the materials. We could just color these particles by scale, but we've done that on my channel before. So we'll just color them by H, which will give us this result here, right? So the newly born ones are pink and then as they get older, they turn black and then the little crystals on the surface are just like bright blue and then they turn into darker blue. So this is very simple to do. Again, we've done this a bunch of times. I know sometimes people are intimidated by the custom properties operator, but really there's nothing to worry about. You can just set the timing here to continuous because we need to continuously sample the H of the particles. And we wanna make a custom float, set it to particle H frames, and I'll just name it my H float, enter, and then we need a mapping operator. Again, set the timing to continuous, mapping from custom float, and say channel my h float. We need to normalize the values. And because I already did this, I know that a value of minus one for the minimum, 30 um, for the maximum worked really well, right? So this controls how long they stay pink before they turn blue, depending on their age. Um, to put it in plain language. So I always encourage you guys to change these numbers so you can see how that works. So now we need a material and we're gonna have two different colors. Um, so we need to make a multi sub object, discard old map, set the number to two materials. And the first one will just be a standard V-Ray material for the diffuse map. I wanna select gradient ramp. And this is what I did for my colors. So feel free to pause the video and you can sample these or just copy them. I wanna give it full reflection so they're nice shiny crystals. And for my material number two, again, V-Ray material, gradient ramp. This is what I did for the second one. 
And actually, since we have three different crystals, let's just do three colors. So I'll set the number to three and do this one more time. And maybe I'll make this one orange just for fun. Maybe something like this, right? Just have fun with this. So we can apply this multi sub object directly to type flow. And as you can see, it's already working. It's actually showing up in viewport. So they start being that brighter pink and then they turn into darker blue until eventually they go black. Now the black final color you can't see in viewport, but you will see it in render. So I know that this is working. So these crystals are the first material. So they're map channel one. Now for the other ones, we'll do map channel two and three. So this is where you change that. So I'll just copy these custom properties, hold shift and put it over here. Hold shift, put it over here. And same for the mapping operator. So hold shift, put it on the bottom here. Hold shift, put it on the bottom of this one. So our pink particles are gonna have this material ID two material. So I'll just set the map channel to two. And these are gonna be our orange ones. So that's gonna be map channel three. So I'll just add a V-Ray light so we can test this in renders. Options, invisible, set the multiplier to maybe 2.5. Enable the V-Ray frame buffer. And again, the most rookie mistake ever, and I always do this, it's like you have to remember to put in that mesh operator, otherwise nothing will show up in render. So we need to add mesh operator here, here, and here. All right, so our mapping is not working right now. All of the crystals are just turning purple. So what you have to do is go back into your material editor, select this material two, go into the gradient ramp and set the map channel to two for this one, and then go back up, select the third one, go into the map and set the map channel to three for this one. And then we also need to add a material ID operator. So set this material ID to two and set this material ID operator to three. And if you wanna make sure that everything's working, even though it already updated in the viewport, you can just disable geometry for these ones. So you can just see the material ID two, make sure that it is set to two. Right, so I can confirm that these are growing and they're nicely changing the color from bright blue to dark blue. So that one is working. So you can turn that one off and you can turn the orange ones on. And for the orange ones, I can confirm that they're growing and they're starting with bright orange and then they're turning into darker orange. Now I'm also noticing that a lot of these are rotated the same way. So let's add a rotation operator to everything. So rotation operator, random 3D, rotation, random 3D, and rotation, random 3D. So that should randomize everything, right? That's looking much better. So now you can enable the display for all of them. We have our cool crystal with all of the different colors changing over time. Everything is working beautifully. They are growing and changing the color. It's hard for me to show you in real time, but it does look exactly like um, the preview that I originally made. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best color combination with that orange, of course, I just did that to demonstrate how those material IDs work but you can just change the orange to, of course, like blue again or green. So this will be our final result. If you just add a few more lights and play with the materials a little bit, maybe with the amount of the particles, pretty simple tutorial, but just goes to show you that you don't need much to make some pretty cool stuff. As always, I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching.